Hello, everybody. This week, we have something unique and special. Our friends at Valor Coffee have a podcast as well, believe it or not. And I got to jump on with Ross, one of their founders and owners, to talk with them this week. Uh, I'll never forget, Valor was getting into Specialty Coffee about the time when we were starting our business. And they were avid listeners of our podcast. I'll never forget an email where Ross and Squad reached out. They had a little coffee cart pop up and they were like, I know we're really small. Would you consider selling us coffee? Because we are inspired by you. And that was a real big honor. We got to meet at SCA in Chicago this year. We hit it off and it is a full circle moment. So pop on over, listen to their episodes. They've got some great content as do we. And thank you so much. So without further ado, this is Ross and your boy Jared talking about culture, tacos, basketball, getting a business started, systems, operations, and all of those things. So thank you so much for listening to us and supporting us as always. Be well and enjoy the combo. Are you a taco lover? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. There's, there is a, uh, a place just down the road from our roastery, Taqueria San Pancho, number two, numero dos. Mm. Um, I don't know if they have two locations and they just thought it'd be a good idea to call the second one the same name and number two or what, but, um, you know, like the, there, the tacos are like a dollar 50 a piece. It's like yes. one of the, one of the, the last, uh, the last cheap things in this world that hasn't been, you know, hit with inflation and all that. Um, but yeah, it's a good time. And you got the meat isn't really that good of quality, but what you have to do is go to the condiment bar and get your your spicy pickled onions. You get your your mm. pico, you get your salsa, you get your lime. You know, it's That's it's a good I time. Know. It's a great time. And if there's multiple salsas, you know, it's like you can get four of the same meat and you get four different tacos with different salsas. So you're you're oh, yeah. killing it. Absolutely. Are you a spicy salsa guy? Yeah. All right. Some people are tender tongues. You know, it's not for me. I go hard. Double T. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not a TT, but I am. <laughs> um, yeah, man, you're right. There's a, there's a huge diversity of flavor in a taco. Mm. If you'll if you'll let it happen, if you'll configure it the right way. But um, right. It's like you can eat the same thing every day and it won't be the same thing every day. And what's that? How? <laughs> How often do you have tacos? Honestly, not as much as you would think based on my love for them. Max once a week. Do you eat the same meals every week? Are you that kind of guy or what's mm. or you keep it pretty, rolling pretty? I mean, I think sort of by default and simplicity, I end up doing that. But I, well, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not planned in that regard, but it just does happen because it does. In the same way, though, if it was easy for me to get tacos that are relatively cheap i'd eat them all the time so you know it's like things i like i like uh we don't have the cheapest tacos in santa cruz because everything's expensive so that's part of the reason i don't do it as much yeah what part of santa cruz do you spend the most time i'm all well our off now it's the west side because of our office roastery cafe all touch each other there with our newest situation but i'm at all of them yeah midtown live oak um i'm at Probably app, yeah, app tossing downtown like the least, but mm -hmm. it's busy. I'm all over the place. Um, well, now that we've got everything sorted, uh, we're we're both releasing this podcast. Yeah, you yeah, you oh yeah, get we're with, in. Get with Wiser. Yep, um, he want if he hasn't reached out already, he wants us to get with each other, and it's gonna be great. Yeah, I was um, I was thinking more about what i wanted to talk about and i felt like when we were on the call last time i realized that i just wanted to talk like i instead of just having a like you know three steps to improve your blah 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 i'd like complete <laughs> opposite direction you know um because i feel like that's that's kind of what y'all's podcast is like you sort of you know that saying like you you find the vein where the gold is hidden sure you know like you you're mm -hmm. searching um and so anyways i i thought that would be good for our our time you know there. what I'm, I'm here to follow your lead we can find our three uh levels of gold digging on our way and see which main vein we hit all right awesome how often do you guys do your podcast 
Uh, once a week. Okay, once a week. Um, yeah. You took a break, though, for a while. Is that true? Yeah, that was due to surviving COVID and running the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was like, a, you got to do it, and you don't have time for this other thing or else. So, yeah, about a, a, probably over a year-ish. So, yeah. we like, you know, we went dark for a while. Why did you a lot of people still who listen to us don't know that we're back? Okay, how do you know? Because some people who had are like, "Oh my gosh, you guys are back!" And it's been a long time. Yeah, I just found out. Right. Yeah, that's how. Well, I don't. That was their voice too. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure that was their voice. Yeah, sounded. I was. That was a rendering via what they wrote, but I'm pretty sure I nailed it. That was AI generated. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how many of your listeners listen to our podcast but i know a lot of our listeners listen to your podcast was that a sure, self like canceling no, out no, I, I don't know no no um, i think i think what it means though it's like two positives equal a positive in this case and most likely they all shifted over to your podcast when we stopped and most of them are still there yeah i don't know i i don't know um i saw that you guys started doing more uh more video which i thought was awesome you guys like just in the roastery on your, mm. your Uline tables? Yeah, we uh, started doing that once a month. Okay, so you do that once a month and then the other weeks you do just audio? Yeah. Okay. Because you, mm-hmm. you have to do it after hours, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's why you do and it once a month. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> and it takes, you know, and then also wiser and the setup and the, yeah, absolutely. You set up in the roastery and then, you know, yeah, deal with the timing of everybody and, Getting even Charles, Chris, and I lined up for afternoons and evenings when we all now have children is not the simplest thing. So yeah, that's why we feel like we'll do it once a month. We'll figure it out. Right. Yeah, that was that was a difficult transition for us. We started off in one of these offices. It was a really small room, and I think uh, you know it, it didn't look terrible, but we were like, man, what if we could do this out there, like in the you know in the warehouse? Because it's just so much bigger and, you know, we can have the equipment in the background and, you know, make it look like we know what we're doing and stuff like that. And, but we're like, but the roaster's going. So obviously that's loud. Um, especially our roaster, we have a Loring and it sounds like a freaking jet engine when it is uh, purging and like doing the, the warm up. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have to, we, we do it at 7 a.m. on Wednesday mornings. Oh, um, fresh yeah but we we've gotten used to it and uh ethan and i we, we play ultimate frisbee before that so oh, we're like perfect like we we get to frisbee at 5 a.m and <clears throat> we just go so hard and then uh and then do the podcast so i love wednesdays he doesn't say you're killing it then you're sitting there with all your endorphins and dopamine you're like yeah i know it's perfect i usually yeah. i usually uh play frisbee go to the gym just to take a shower yeah and then come in to the podcast feeling super fresh and yeah it's great what it's awesome. um what role does the podcast play in your business like why wh- why do you do it and what wh- how do you think it affects your company well now we do it because we believe that we're going to be able to offer advice and we're going to continue to share our experience and what's going on Originally, we did it to showcase that we had a viable business prior to having a cafe, right? We were roasting. We had two different bags total of coffee, yeah. uh, one from Honduras, one from Ethiopia. And we had our podcast so that we could tell people about selling coffee. And that was how that started. And then we were like, let's keep recording this and show people and share with people what we're learning on our opening as well as let's get people because it was early on in the podcast world so let's get other people we were in the la proximity i was in santa barbara so we could get a lot of human beings to santa barbara to hang out and be on the actual podcast so yeah you know it started from chris and i not working together and wanting to still work on different things because we had started with our blog and our little you know situation that we had back like 2010 till then and uh, we weren't working together at the time. So it was, it was a way for us to get together and kind of keep expressing ourselves and sharing perspectives. You know, this is yeah. the time when people were like, 
the V60 came out and all of a sudden coffee could be good because it was a V60, but then they were brewing their whole brewing experience was done in a minute and a half. And we were like, there's no way you're getting great coffee in a minute and a half in a pour over. And it was all, it's the best. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know, man. So it was one of those things where I was like, let's talk about, you know, reality and having some critical thought and make sure that we're not all being sheeple to the most famous coffee person who's the loudest. Sure. Yeah. Do, do you feel like, uh, it, through your podcast, you were able to bring a really practical boots on the ground, like, you know, two guys that are in cafes every day, sort of approach to the industry. Whereas where I, f- I feel like some, like you said, loud, loud influencers, I don't have anyone like specific in mind or anything, yeah. but, uh, you know, they sometimes lack that actual hands on experience of like seeing how the V60 might translate in a cafe like serving real guests you know i think you said it kind of perfectly there is that the reason you can't remember them is that they're very loud for a short period of time and everybody remembers the era and the person but then the person or people don't typically have the experience they don't walk out and see through whatever it might be in a way where it ends up tangibly being integrated into either our culture or their business. And so there's so many people who are able to garner a lot of influence for a little while. And people are interested in being a part of something. There's nothing necessarily wrong inherently with that. But I think you said it right. That's why you don't hear about them. There's opinionated people like crazy. There's been a ton of them. But the ones who end up kind of sticking it out aren't always necessarily the loudest, but they are, you know, the longest tenured and they continuously are here. Yeah. yeah yeah so let me ask you this do people ever say i miss the old cat and cloud mm, if, uh, well I, i'm i'm hearing that too broadly do you mean like the podcast the cafes uh just what do when you, mean? you look at your company um not necessarily the podcast but you know you've gone through all these phases and mm-hmm. you've scaled and you've done the heart has been the same uh, mm-hmm. as far as I can tell, but, uh, but do people, do you ever hear people say like, Oh, I miss, I miss how it used to be. I miss the old cat and club. You know, weirdly, not often. No. In fact, I can't remember anybody specifically speaking to it in that regard. Good question. No. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool to think that that's a no, you know, yeah. there's those times where People have said that about most businesses I've worked at. I think there's like, remember that time it was super cool, but there's never like, I wish it was still like that because we truly have consistently worked on being better in Mm -hmm. all regards. And I don't think anybody could go back to those places and be like, that was a better version of the place. Mm -hmm. There is occasion, I think, where I or Chris or Charles will speak to things culturally that we aren't as or even like quality related that we're not as sharp on in a moment and be like you know re centering our crew but that's not the same thing at all right that's like a hey we set out to do it like this this is the intention this is what we need to be doing and we've gotten a little you know off center so no no, interestingly enough and that kind of makes me happy to think about so rad (laughs) Yeah, that's really cool. What what do you think are some of the main ways Cat and Cloud has evolved when you look back? Mm-hmm. We've gotten clearer consistently on what our values mean and our mission, right? We have always gotten better at communicating that. And the way we would figure that out is, you know, we had our best version at the time. We'd be working through it, walking through it, explaining it. And there'd be things that we assumed, you know, being new at the time to new as business owners, I should say. And we would assume that everybody knew what we were talking about. I mean, the most clear and obvious one is artistry is one of our, uh, is one of our values. Mm -hmm. And we assumed because when we opened the business that Chris and I were both barista competitors and Western regional champions and made the top five in the United States barista competitions that everybody who worked for us would automatically assume that coffee quality and barista craft in general was like a no brainer. It was, that was what we were supposed to do. Right. And so for us, we opened the business. We're like, what's the evolution in specialty coffee? The next level is experience, hospitality, 
connection in that way. So we're going to talk about that a lot because the coffee is going to be obvious. And two years in, we had a bunch of amazing hospitality people who didn't really inherently care about specialty coffee at all and how, and how we expected them to or wanted them to. So we're like, what is going on? And then yeah. it was like, geez, it's so obvious. It's just, we didn't build an intentional place to talk about the whole process of craft. We still did like intro to coffee. We still did quality stuff. We still had recipes. We still had all the, all of the things that you do to make it good. But yeah. the actual understanding that this is an imperative focus in who we are wasn't written down and therefore it wasn't talked about in a repetitive way. And boom, simple as that. Yeah. So that's one way just that to kind of translates to around everything. Just to park on that one just for a second. Uh, park it. That, what you're saying, gosh, yes, I relate to that a lot. Um, I think something that we used to say early on was things like, you know, we are, we're a people company and, oh, by the way, we serve coffee or like we're, we, we're hospitality first and it's about this connection with guests and, and each other and, oh, yeah, it's through the 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 means, the medium of coffee. Mm -hmm. And while that, while that I think communicates a nice point, you know, I think what it can do is minimize the coffee and exactly, exactly what you're saying that like, Hey, if our product isn't absolutely awesome, like as, as good as it can be, then that's not hospitable. That's Mm -hmm. not, that's not like a, uh, cool thing to do to someone to serve them a bad product you know even if you did even if you did do it with excellent hospitality and with like genuine human connection um so how did you how did you realize that the coffee side of your business wasn't getting the love that it needed like you know were did people hand out drinks that had bad latte art on it or like you can get as specific as you want or did people yeah. just have passion? What would that look like? Uh, I mean, it came down to taste for, you know, Chris and I drink espresso and milk drinks every single day. So it came down to consistency in some regard and what we wanted out of the coffee and how it tasted. We latte art is like a sport. It's like learning a sport, Like mm. you cannot expect somebody to be amazing at latte art without spending time and practicing. So for us, latte art isn't while we wish, right? We wish it would come out how we would like it to and, you know, the, all that. But there's there's time and tenure related to that. So really what we hung our hats on with that was more texture, progression, people getting better. I mean, if you're new at it and I'm getting mad that you're not nailing anything but a, a heart or something or like even good contrast, like that's unfair of me. So yeah, all I'd say it's all about flavor. And then it was about engagement in terms of, listening to our team are they talking about the coffees are they tasting the coffees uh we even went as far as to make sure that the discount policy reflected the desire for our team to understand our coffees and so if it's without milk you get it for free no matter what anytime you want forever we stole that and you get oh nice yeah i mean and that's if you bring your family and that's whatever if you're drinking coffee black you're having espresso like nothing added to it we got you like that is that is passive learning and it's true you know at first nobody likes espresso and at first most people don't like coffee especially without anything in it so if we can train you to understand it great if you don't have to pay for it you're more likely to give it a go um so anyways we started with that and yeah conversations where people talking about it were i mean do they do they know the menu (sighs) Are they interested when we put new coffees on? Do you hear any buzz whatsoever? Are the teams and the team leaders and the the coordinators, which is equivalent to a, a, you know, manager of a store and an assistant manager, are they leading in that regard? And, you know, they weren't as much as we'd like. So you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Can you, can you tell me what the leadership org chart looks like in your, Mm -hmm. your retail department? Like for Yeah. So in retail, Totally, totally. So in retail now, which is great, um, we have a head of retail for the first time in the last six months, we'll call it, maybe less, uh, in Herman, who was a team leader at two stores and one store at a time. But he's been amazing. He's been with us for six years. Um, At our store levels, we have four locations, right? Each store has a team leader. 
and then they all have a coordinator. And those names are specific because that is what the jobs most entail. Uh, the coordinator, right, is in charge of ensuring everything is working properly. The team leader is making sure that, well, sorry, coordinating, you know, the schedule, uh, ordering the, the brass tacks. And yes, they're doing coaching. The team leader is in charge of coaching and teaching everybody everything and making sure that it's happening at that level. And we, you know, we use cultural teaching in that peer-to-peer -peer communication and teaching is important. Uh, we have our handbook, we have our passport and all these things to support that. But that is essentially the breakdown of those jobs. At Swift Street, right, we have, uh, that's our one with the kitchen. So mm. it's our newest location as a full kitchen as well. So we have a team leader for the back of house, a team leader for the front of house and like an overarching uh, team leader as well. Okay. And then, so what, what does the head of retail do? What's their role? Yeah. I mean, they're essentially in charge of all the strategy, the, the ensuring the metrics that we need to hit to be the successful business are there, progression, uh, deciding what strategies to follow or not, and hitting you know quarterly goals that build to the yearly goals, and everything else that kind of falls under that. You know, coaching all the team leaders, we're developing. Um, you know, we've had versions of all of the trainings, but we're, we're developing uh, our most new iteration of coordinator training and that will you know be able to follow in step with a passport that's kind of been the, the evolution okay. i and chris and i built the company retail passport and now herman and i are working on the coordinator and team leader version of that for the retail cafe and what's a passport so a passport is our version uh well no i mean it's it's a training progression so we know that everybody learns at a different rate Right. So you are able to get things checked off when you're able to achieve them at the level that we would expect. Right. So to the point of, gosh, uh, we'll say latte art. There's we'll call it multiple levels. You have the generalized ability to pour a heart in every single drink at the appropriate texture. Cool. Check mark. But we're not necessarily at a place where or no, no business, I think, should be at the place where you need to be able to do these things prior to working in those positions. So with the need for people to get better, we will need people to work on the bar and to progress. Am I a barista at Cat and Cloud? No, I'm in training. I haven't been checked off yet. But I am on the bar. I am making espresso. I am doing things at a level that is we can check in and make sure that it's good and great. But can I do it at this level? you know, every single time without any help. No, cool. You're not checked off yet. Mm -hmm. uh, with with the ability to get checked off and moved up, there's there's some levels. So in your first in your first year, you're able to achieve uh, four 25 cent raises in your first year of tenure here. If you keep as if you can hit those those markers, yeah. and if you don't, then you don't. But I mean, there's you now know what it takes either way. You know, it's it's a there's a clear path. So your team, you, if I was to get hired at Cat and Cloud, I would be mm -hmm. handed a, a book, right? Yeah, that handbook has, and a passport. Okay, so the passport uh, tells me what I need to learn next. Is that is passport? That, hey, okay. Right, with all your stuff, there's yep. things. It's probably backwards for you, maybe not, but there's no, that, right? Not. And that's all the way in the roastery. So with each one of these little line items, the teacher's edition has all the specifics. So there's like, you know, there's a lot of specifics in there. You'd also get handed a handbook, which is all of our rules and regulations and policies and, and lingo and language and some note space for you to take notes on. You'll go through all that, that stuff in orientation. That looks so sick, dude. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Probably How long have you been doing that? Uh, this was like a big, how like has it been implemented, do you mean? Yeah. We worked on this over last year and it's been implemented all year. Like I think it got implemented in November. Of last year. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, actually, uh, in Barista Magazine, I, in the June edition, I wrote an article on training that's going to come out. Oh, sweet. Yeah. In this next, I guess in a couple of days, maybe. Okay. So it, if I'm handed a passport, is it on me as the, the trainee to sort of push myself along and get with someone and say like, hey, I need to, I need to check this off or, or is it? uh my team leads job to like move me along there or is it both how does that who's who's driving that ship right well that's the beauty of it it is both right like 
it's both and there needs to be checks and balances and teamwork is one of our values in that regard. So yes, the coordinators and the team leaders are going to continue to push you along at the rate that they feel that you're ready. If you feel like you're ready for more, your job is to be engaged. Your job is to ask your peers, yo, I want to practice this. This is what, this is what's next on my checklist. I want to go, you know, and same thing, coordinators as well. Hey, I want to go. Is, do you have extra time? Can we schedule something? Can we sit down? Can we talk? Like you are able to receive, and this is, this is a little bit of where there's the check and balance and that you can't move through it too quickly. Cause I do think there's really great, um, what I call it, the student who can memorize all the things on the test and crush it, but they don't necessarily with, with stand, not with stand, they don't have uh, it's not consistent over a period of time. So yeah. you can only get the raise every three months throughout that first period. So, you know, every quarter you can receive the raise, you can move on past it, but you still can't receive the raise without that amount of tenure. So it's, it's a little bit of a check and balance in that regard. Um, both ways. I think that's better. You know, yeah. you'll find out who's hungry. Right. Um, okay. I could say more there, but a uh, question. Uh, have you ever almost given up on cat and cloud? Have you ever been to the point where you're like full burnout? Do I really want to do this anymore? Hmm. Full burnout, yes. Do I really want to do this? No. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever said I don't want to. Well, that's a no. It's not that I don't want to do a cat and cloud thing. I think what's happened is there are those times when you are the business owner and you have to get it either succeeds or doesn't, right? There's nobody else to do it. And sometimes you have a skill set that fits a place really, really well that just sucks for you, drains you. Mm. And you end up doing it for a very long period of time or multiple things that fit in those categories. And it's just, that's it. You know, like you're living a life that's far more draining than filling. Um, and in that regard, there's been thoughts of like, man, maybe there's a way one day to like, or, or not, not even like that. It's more like, what is it that I'm missing? What is it that's not working? And through experience, you start finding out, oh, and some tools that I think have been really helpful for me is, oh, I'm living in this place that just is really draining for me. And I need to figure out who can come support me here. Who can, is there a position available? What do I need to spend less time here and more in the places that fill me up? And that's when it's all shifted. Um, I'd say, I'd say that's probably the most accurate answer there's never been a time where i'm like nah, let's walk away from it let's sell my equity let's move on nah not not really on the table so you're saying there was a season where you were in a role in the in your business that was very draining is that is that what you're saying multiple seasons for sure yeah what what was one of those roles like when was one like the one you can remember the most i mean it was kind of the it was the specific focus on just head of retail but like there wasn't it, it was when we weren't we weren't organized that's really the truth like when you're not organized somebody has to figure out the stuff and the way that my brain works best i sit in the coo role now which means with the exception of two spaces specifically i'm helping people solve problems and helping progress our business to achieve its mission. And for me, that's where I fit best. However, if you're sitting in a place where you can't easily make change, it feels like in other parts of the business, but you're seeing all of the potential pitfalls or you're seeing things that are really going to add up, it gets tough. And so if you're not organized, that's what happens. And it ends up living, it lives somewhere, no matter what, whether somebody sees it or not, it's alive. And I, for better or worse, have a brain who kind of ruminates on problem solving and seeing what could go wrong and seeing what could be a bottleneck in a number of different places. The positive spin is I love through lines and I love the ability to accurately communicate. This is how our mission and our values live from A to Z in a probably super frustrating way for people who don't like the details of that. Mm. And, um, that's the kind of business I want to have. So 
you know, that's, that's where somewhat maturity can speak and say, Hey, you don't have to worry about everything, which is true. And that's been part of the letting go process. And the other part is finding your spite place to your right space to be able to influence appropriately. Have a little patience. Okay. Does that so, answer your question? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Uh, when you walk into one of your cafes and you see someone doing something wrong or incorrectly yeah. behind the bar, like someone on a team, they, uh, they're, maybe they're not tamping correctly or that you like, you know, the, the one for me is like, I see someone we, we like, will uh, pre dose and tamp like four Porter filters and just leave yeah. them out. Um, and I always like walk by and look at them to see if there's any cracks in the pucks uh -huh. and uh, you know, something like that, you know? Uh -huh. So what do you do in that situation? Because you're, you're Mr. Big boss now and you don't, mm -hmm. you don't have uh, the relationship with all of these baristas, right? That uh, a lot of them may not know you that well. Probably most of them probably don't know you that well. And there's not mm -hmm. this like level of deep trust Mm -hmm. uh, maybe fundamentally they trust you, but not like experientially relationally. Daily, relationally. Yeah. So how do you handle that situation? Yeah, I, I think, well, one thing I do ensure that I'm around enough that there's not a ton of uncomfortability around me. So there is going to be no matter what as the owner, no, they're always going to be afraid of you in some capacity or intimidated. So I, I do show up enough that I think most people know that they're, they're not going to get in trouble in, in a way where it's a problem, no matter what, with me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really helpful. They know that I'm mostly default positive. Uh, so to start there, the other part is I've worked enough with the leadership team to know that there's certain things that will be taken care of by them no matter what. So I don't have to say anything, even if it's happening. And I'm really proud of our team for that. And then if there's something that it, basically the, where I'm going is it has to be pretty egregious or which almost never happens, or it has to be just like a fun opportunistic coaching moment where it can be life giving and team building. Okay. Otherwise I'm not doing it anymore. And that's not because I don't care. It's that I do trust that my team will see it. I also have been the guy who's experienced the bosses who come in and kind of critically rip the place apart. Totally. And being the person who's like, no, I see all that and I actually have a plan, but you're just kind of like bringing it to me and walking away, like bombing the place. And you didn't even ask like what's going on. We didn't have a conversation. Like you just didn't give me the chance, you know, give, give the team the chance first. So, you know, I don't typically step in unless there's uh, some form of patterning or and in fact, most of the time I don't step in at all unless there's patterning or it's fun. And if there's patterning, I talk to them on the side and hey. Here's what I've noticed pretty consistently recently, and it might have to do with a bit of the morale and the energy. Let's find out what's going on. Check in with leadership. It might have to do with uh, quality in general of an espresso. Like, hey, the espresso here has been so-and-so. Or if there's a single person, I'll, you know, and said, hey, just check in with them. See how it's going. Maybe see if they're tasting their coffee. And, yeah. You know, none of these things happen consistently, but that's, that's more the way I'd approach it these days. Yeah. Are you guys We're still also working on this something called Walk the Floor, which allows us to give. I think we briefly talked about this when we were attempting to, to do the podcast. Yes. But we're working on an audit system. I hate that term. We're going to work on a system <laughs> that allows us to critically look at our experience and to identify how well it's going. And basically, that'll be like a monthly thing. And if that, if everything meets expectations, great. If something doesn't, they have a month to fix it. And then there's the other category of like, this needs to get fixed now. And we'll return like a week later and give them a, a week to figure out what's going down. Yeah. And that'll allow everything to kind of, you know, open that relationship, that expectation. They'll have everything. It won't feel like, oh, I didn't know that. And that, that works again two ways. We'll all need to know that we trained it well or didn't, that it's clear or not. And on the other side, they'll know what's to be expected so that if I have a conversation or anybody They'll be like, totally, you know, it's like same page. We're trying mm -hmm. to go here. Has anybody ever told you the, the saying that as the business owner, no one will ever care as much as you do? Yeah. I mean, they've said that. What do you think about that? I hope not. <laughs> I mean, no, I hope that's not true is what I should say. Right. Uh, and I don't. True? 
I don't think it's true based on my experience personally. I cared. Um, can't compare how much you cared to someone else. So I guess this, sure. like that's impossible. So maybe it is true. I cared at the level that I would have. I mean, I cared at a level where I worked somewhere for three months without officially getting a paycheck and a day off. I worked for just dips just to get something going. Yeah, you don't think you do that unless you care about it as much as an owner. You're saying you you worked somewhere else before I, Cat and Cloud. Yeah, yeah, I did that for someone else and worked for just tips and no paycheck and did not take one day off for three months and I worked open to close. Dang boy. So I don't know. I mean, for me, I don't think that's true. I think I cared. Uh, but, you know, if you're an employee, I'm, I'm just trying to, like, uh, check my own self, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, but I just didn't know what I didn't know. So I guess at that regard, no, I feel like I did care as much. Like, I would have done whatever it took to, to make the place successful because I felt like it was my career and my opportunity for, or one of the ways I could potentially have a career. Yeah, do you think that it, did you do you think you did that because you really believed in the company or do you think you did that because you believed in what the company could give you for your career? Well, it was synonymous because I believed in the company and I believed what I could help make the company. Yeah. I I would plan to make something like that, you know. It had to do with passion, it had to do with care, it had to do with opportunity, it had to do with the ability to create something with people that I thought was like the squad. So I think that that maybe has to do with passion, it has to do with belief, has to do with opportunity, progression, sure. But I mean, in that regard, to answer your question earlier, like, I do believe I cared as much as the ownership group. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the money invested, right? I didn't have the potential loss of whatever, you know, that I do now where everything's signed in my name. So if we go under, they come for all my stuff. Yeah. But that just kind of means that the responsibility nobody will have as much responsibility and skin in the game as the owners it doesn't necessarily have to do with care so i'd like to believe that people are able to care as much as me and maybe sometimes more because I mean, let's, let's face it like if there's an amazing leader who works with call it we have 80 employees we'll say team members so we'll, we'll call it 50 plus or in retail if the people who work in retail are working with all those people, they have tighter relationships with them. And if we have caring leaders, they should care about them by default more because of the emotional connection, not because they, you know, like I care about them too, but I still don't talk to them. I don't have the, the back and forth relationship. So who am I to say that I care about, you know, Phoebe, who I think is really awesome and makes great coffee, who I enjoy seeing every day as much as the person who knows more intimate things about their life and, and works with them literally every day in detail and it's helping develop them personally like you're invested in that way and so i'd i'd hope that they care more in some regard than i do mm -hmm. yeah. just by human intuition i don't want anybody to misstate me and be like the owner doesn't care like sure just be honest be honest with yourself if you're out there listening to like the people that you talk to and know every day you default would step up for them faster and quicker than you would somebody that you know a little bit less and that's just human nature mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about the things you do in your life outside of work to help you show up well to work. Yeah. Like the, the <laughs> things that, uh, that make you feel human, you know, <coughs> it's, it's easy. It's easy to just get in this mode where you're all you're focused on is just output, mm -hmm. like churning and makes you feel like a, a crop. You know, mm. like in, it's kind of, or like a robot that just produces work, you know, fruit, I guess, for other mm -hmm. people or for your company. But um, I think that's one of the things that helps so many business owners avoid burnout is having other things in their life that help them feel human. Yeah. Uh, what's that for you? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's totally evolved and changed the more I learn uh, about myself, the more I learn about humans in general and what we our needs. Uh, I just gave, I just gave this advice to somebody reached out and asked. So I guess I'll start with like, if you are a new business owner, truly new, right? You're getting something founded. There's 
a difference between there and the progress along the way. So let me walk into that a little bit. If you're opening a business and you were like me, we'll say, and you have a family of four and you're opening a business and your life is either on, it's fail or succeed based on this, right? The best advice I can say is let your family and friends know that it is going to be work them and like probably just exercise and a little bit of rest until you get to a point. And that's like, you're going to need that support. You're going to be in there all the time and you're going to do your very best to show up. You're going to need help though. And that's it. You can prioritize nothing but work, your family or romantic relationship, a little bit of exercise. That's the mental health and rest as much as you can. Like there's nothing else to it. Eat and drink and do it. And you need to know that that's not enough for the long haul. So you need to, even just starting there, I knew this, like you need to work to where you can actually take a day off or two days off. And that was prior to understanding actual proper rest. So from there it was make sure that you are exercising consistently enough that you have the mental bandwidth to make good decisions. And what that means then is the exercise was also the space to think. So I would run, even though I didn't like running because running is a repetitive nothing. You can either listen to a podcast and learn something and, and whatever, think about how things are going on in your business. You can, you can plan, but you can plan in a way where you're like, you're thinking, you have space. And so, you know, you build that in and that really takes you to the next true step, which is you need to start building in space to think. If you're going to be a big leader in, in a company, you need to build in space to think. Your job is to think and solve problems and they are not done by typing faster working more there's just no way around it mm -hmm. the, there's truly no way around it um our brains digest things when we sleep so even if you're learning something new you still have to you're going to hit a ceiling on the day and until you go to sleep your brain's not going to integrate it so that you can even learn more so whatever that looks like for you it's going to be different i know i'm giving a long-winded answer but i'm kind of passionate about this and the progression um and then you need to learn about yourself and what's what's really going on with you, you know, and everybody there is going to be different. So the, the overarching simple stuff, right? Do your best to eat well, hydrate, exercise for sure. Um, work on your relationships. Probably look at maybe going to a therapist and talking about some things. And the, the more you can learn about your your past and who you are, the more you can start learning about what you actually want to do and what you love and what play looks like, you know. And plays play, I think, is super key. Um, there's a many, many geniuses in the world who came up with their best ideas doing something that had nothing to do with the work that they do. Right. And I know that's true for me. I mean, everybody's heard me talk about Disney. And the re Disney was a place where I could play. I could take my whole family. And every time I would find inspiration. But I'd also watch somebody in something integrate systems training process i'm like well this is working clearly millions and billions and trillions of dollars are going to these parks say what you will about the company say what you will about the music they're not the music the, the streaming and all that other stuff that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about how does this thing work and this thing is full of details and it's full of people who they found a way to spend a great amount of money sure but what they're really paying for is the ability to be present with their family all day long and that i think is the genius of disney it's no matter what you're doing, you're in that moment or kind of working towards the next together. And so I watch that and I'm like, how can we do our version of that in coffee? Um, so you got to find your places to play. Man, I just got tangented to why I go there. But that was play for me when I didn't have space to play. It was like combo it up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about uh, true rest, you know, like mm. I think that there's been times for me where I'm, I'm super spent, super gassed. Uh, and I'm like, you know what? I just need to veg out. I'm going to, uh, watch a show or I'm going to yeah. scroll, I'm going to scroll on my phone and I'm just going to consume content so I can turn my brain off. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's brutal, a brutally evil thing to do or something, but mm -hmm. I, I love what you said about allowing yourself to have space to think mm -hmm. because like, you know, if I, this is a good example is if I'm on the way to a meeting and I'm driving in the car 
I can either put on a podcast or I can listen to music or I can, uh, you know, ha- have a, a YouTube video on and I'm not watching it, obviously. Um, obviously not. Yeah, of course not. Uh, I can, ha- I can do that and sort of like, oh, I'm going to enjoy myself before I work. I'm going to like rest before I work. Mm-hmm. But if I will just sit there in silence and just let whatever thought come or, you know, think about what I'm about to walk into or, or whatever it is, there's so, there's so many downloads that come during that mm-hmm. time. Whereas, you know, even if I'm listening to some like business podcast about communication or about negotiation or about, you know, people or whatever it is like, oh, I'm going to get hyped up for my meeting. I, th- I find it's, it's actually counterintuitive that mm-hmm. um, if I will just sit there, I have enough information. Well, like, let's, let's be honest. Like, I, I know that there's so much I can learn. That's not what I'm, I'm not saying I know all things, but I am saying that like, if I'm not giving my, my self time to just p- put the car in neutral my you know my brain in neutral and just be you know mm-hmm. that i feel like that's such a huge part of mental health and like being able to to show up in an engaged effective way uh even if, even if like the op- the other side of that is like i'm going to listen to a business podcast and just learn 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 mm-hmm. but it's it doesn't our brains don't work like that we can't just consume even if it's good content all day, every day, and then work and then sleep like that can't be your existence, you know? No, I I totally agree. I think that's where, you know, people hate a lot of people hate exercise. I don't, but I also know that when you do something like exercise, what it does is it gets a lot of that. And this could be for you also, there's a lot of other ways this could be this could be dance, this could be singing, this could be something where you like move your body, right? There's stuff in there. And what it does is it ends up releasing the hormones and chemicals that allow you to settle down. And then you're not sitting in whatever that place is antsy, right? You come out of it and you're like, okay, I'm allowed to relax for a second. One, I'm just, my body's tired. But even then you're like, you've expelled a lot of the tension and anxiety that we're all gonna carry from somewhat scrolling, from listening to consistently consuming, And to, I agree with you, like consuming and scrolling sometimes is great and relaxing for a minute. It's still giving us dopamine hits, right? We're still consuming something, but to be able to get all that out, it does create, it's like, it's one of the, I hate the term hack, but it's one of the ways to get yourself to a place where you're accepting of that space. And I think we need to recognize how we're feeling. And I I know a lot of people like, well, I just don't do well relaxing. And I'm kind of one of them but I know that I need to. So what I do find a way to move my body in such a way where it relaxes. And then it's like, okay, cool. Those moments, they'll come to you. The moments of genius, the shower thoughts, people call them. There's a reason you have them in the shower and it's because you go into a place, your body relaxes, you're doing something mindless, but you're doing something that's in a relaxing, calm state. And you're able to think clearly and feel like, dude, shower thoughts, genius. I get something to write it down. It's like, yeah, you can make yourself have shower thoughts without going in the shower. You know, you yeah. just have to understand what's happening. Yeah. And I'm not going to say it's not challenging. It's challenging for me all the time, but you know, yeah, that's, I mean, I, I do stuff now that I would never do for exactly those reasons. Hot yoga being one of them, like to be mentally challenged to come out of somewhere just drenched in sweat, tired and being like, okay, I got through something that's severely anxiety inducing for me, which is being overheated. I don't like being overheated. I'm a big wuss about it. (laughs) And uh, now I'm very settled and I'm very clean feeling, even though I haven't taken a shower yet. I've sweat past everything and my body is like at peace in a unique way. Yeah. Here comes good ideas. Sometimes you don't even have to write them down because the good ones stay. The Mm -hmm. good ones you remember the next day. You don't have to write everything down. The important ones stay. You don't lose them and, or they'll come back in a week or two. Yeah. Yeah. We tangent it hard, but it, I just, I think taking care of yourself is so important anyway. And, and coffee is something that makes you feel like up and it does make you feel productive and it's good to feel productive, but mm-hmm. it's double edged sword in that way. So, okay. Can you think of a time in cat and clouds history where, you you were like 
hey, if this deal goes through or like, oh, if we if if we get this account or if we uh, open this location or if we get this opportunity, we are going to be transformed as a business. Like we're <laughs> no. one, one of these like. Not yet. Like I, you ever think like, when are we going to catch our big break? You know, whatever the heck that means. You know, what's your relationship with that thought? You know, because the so much of what I feel in my business is it's it is just the slowest growth. You know, it's like especially mm-hmm. in coffee, like, you know, if our our roastery, our roastery is doing great, but we have to buy another roaster, you know, our yeah. our totally. but it's like so it's just like I feel like the growth is just so just so <sighs> gradual because we're in a, a low margin business and the assets you need to make coffee are pretty expensive. Turns out, you know, mm-hmm. it's not like it's not like we're in the software or something or like a, mm-hmm. a something like that where you have a a really awesome margin and all you need is your computer or you know what whatever pay totally. for someone to code it. There's obviously costs involved with that, but like, what do you think about the the uh, the thought of like hitting your big break in coffee? Is that is that real? No such thing, no. Nah. I don't think so. I mean, I how many how many world barista champions have we had in in your um, company? I, no, in the world. Like, oh, how many world know. barista champions do we have? How many of them are just like killing it? And James Hoffman's the only one that you can kind of say that specifically to. In that regard, right? Fame, quote unquote, fortune with who you don't even know. It just looks that way, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Klaus kind of has a cafe. And I'm not saying none of them are successful, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you are the best barista in the world. Literally, by default, like at that point, you know, at least according to our current scoring. So how are you doing? Uh, Sure. No, you know, like probably well, some opportunities came, but. I don't think that's a, you know, that's not it. Um, the big companies that came before all of us in specialty that ended up either selling, they sold. So like maybe monetarily they got there, but what we have our intelligence, we have our stump towns in terms of at least cultural uh, impact that kind of went there. You got your Pete's and your Starbucks culturally in a different way that like hit this level that you, you might, people might call that the big break, right? Cause they, the, CEO and whoever maybe owned the business when they sold it get some sort of big payout if they get paid bought by for hundreds of millions of dollars like I'm sure they got paid well at that point is that your break maybe it is maybe you're not it depends on what you want to do with your life you know so yeah for us there hasn't been there hasn't been one we had to open three cafes we knew that just to be able to live in Santa Cruz at base level <laughs> just to be able to support ourselves enough to pay rent here because like I live in a place that's under a thousand square feet and I pay 3,500 bucks in rent. (laughs) Yeah. Goodness. So, you know, like there is no big break coming. I'm not going, I'm not even thinking about owning a house in this town or area. Not, it's not on my, in my cards. Uh, So you have to love the work and you have to have a vision for something that can be, better because of the thing that you're creating. And that's why I'm in this business. I also believe that we can work to be somebody, some company, a company that has bigger influence. And I think that that isn't going to be the big break, but that's going to provide for not only myself, but other people in our company. And I think that that drives me a lot. And I think it allows other people in our company to believe in what we're doing for themselves beyond just liking it, you know? No, I mean, Maybe a big break would be somehow partnering with a company that buys a ton of wholesale. And even then, most of them don't, you know, like we're working with Meta, but it's just one campus for one year. You can't bank on that and you don't get it back. They don't want it back. And it's not that they like it more or less. They actually might like it the most, but that's just not what they do. So, you know, you don't, there's no such thing as that big break. There is, you signed up to own a business. Now that's your job and that's your job forever. Yeah. So what are you going to, what are we going to make of it? Um, I'd say one of the goals I give to people 
is recognizing you don't want to be there all day, every day for your entire life. So I haven't hit this quite yet. What's it going to take for you to be able to walk away and take a month long vacation and not have to take one phone call? Do your work. What's that going to look like? And if you can, if you get there, I'd say maybe that's hitting your big, that's hitting your big break to me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the freedom to be able to engage with it, but also the freedom to be able to walk away and enjoy what you've created and the space that it's given you and hopefully other people in your company too. Yeah. That's, that'd be my win. How did the meta thing come to be? Uh, we, I mean, yeah, you say it, it's truly, this is what's interesting. I think everything also works together. Like to your point earlier, you can't just have a, a computer and whatever. Right. But like, there's this thing with wholesale that your cafes sell as much or more at times, depending on your location than your, um, I mean, when in our case, we have a podcast and we have some semi-famous, like Chris is pretty famous in the world with his for YouTube. So that's helped us in that regard. And my competitions and so on as well support underneath that probably secondary with our podcast, but like you are either seen or you're not. And I think if you have an amazing experience, people will talk about it. Right. So if it was easy and we could just snap our fingers and I could have one or two or four cafes in some specific cities, I guarantee you our wholesale would program would go with it because people engage with our team maybe like wow why is your team so awesome it's like because we find awesome people and we train them well and people are awesome if they're given belief and trained and everybody actually wants to be good at something they don't just want to phone it in at their job but we don't support them they'd go there and they'd be like wow that's awesome you guys should sell coffee do you sell coffee yeah we do great this company rules now we sell more coffee you know like i think it works like that However, to build out a cafe costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and you have to go into debt for it. And that's where you're kind of back and forth. Do we have the team and people and resources to do this? And every time you do, you kind of work your way up if you do a good job or tank. So, right. Um, so you think someone like someone from Meta just was coming into they came the in. Cafes. That's the answer. Yeah. Like somebody yeah. literally drove by and they're like, they're looking somebody who worked with um a subsidiary company who helped them find their next purveyor. They drove by, they're like, oh, there's that place. Let's try it. Wow, that place is awesome. Let's ask if they're good. And then we have amazing hospitality and we responded really quick and we're easy to work with and showed up and the rest is history in that regard. But that one, surprisingly, we're, we're like 30 minutes from all Silicon Valley. I totally thought they knew who we were. The person had no idea who we were and stumbled on us. Mm -hmm. That's actually not normal, but it happened. Isn't that crazy how, uh, you know, you think about wholesale opportunities, like when, when someone comes into your cafe, they are, that's their first impression with your brand, or maybe they've followed you on Instagram a little bit and kind of knew yeah. about your, your company, but they're like, all right, let's go experience this firsthand for ourselves and see if we want to partner with Cat and Cloud. And, you know, whoever's working that day is that that person that's coming in is just another person to them you mm -hmm. know but to the the company uh it could be it it's 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 really just placing dignity and value upon every single human that comes in to your cafe mm -hmm. not because they can give you something like not because uh, it might be someone from meta and that could be a big wholesale opportunity but like like i i remember um I can't remember if we also stole this from you guys or if we just came up with this ourselves. Not that this is original thought, but um, what, there was one day when uh, my business partner Riley was working in a cafe before we started Valor, and Usher came in. You know, oh, Usher, I see it. Usher baby. Oh, I know. Yeah, dude. Uh, do you want to guess? Was it guess seven o'clock on the dot when he came in? <laughs> no, no. I think it was afternoon. Uh, the drop top. <laughs> okay, <I'm done. laughs> can you guess? Can you guess what his order was? Let's see if it's Usher. Oh no, yeah. man! I mean, it's first time. Oh gosh, what's he getting in the world? I'm gonna guess flavored latte. Cup of ice. Oh well, yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. Cup of Simple. ice, but but anyway, uh, one of the things that Riley learned 
in that moment when when Ursher came in to to the cafe he was working at was like, I don't want to be that guy that's like, you're Usher. Oh my gosh. Like nah. can, can you sign can you sign the cup or like can I get a picture? Because I want, you know, he wanted this the space to be a safe space for yeah. everyone and for everyone to just feel at ease and feel mm -hmm. welcome and like they're in the right spot and like this is their place that they can come back to and uh you know that's a that's a, a policy that we have in our company is if if anyone that is a celebrity or you know a, a figure a so, so public a public social figure comes in never acknowledge that never mm -hmm. uh say like oh you're blah 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 like let's get mm -hmm. a picture because of what i just said and sort of the the thought that spawns off of that sort of policy is we should just be treating everyone like they're a celebrity like mm -hmm. we should we should there's no one person that's more important than another one and yeah. let's let let's let the the dignity and value that each human carries be the thing that inspires us to serve people at a high level you know um, absolutely and and so you know you <sighs> whenever whenever a, a wholesale person comes and trains here and they're like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna go to the cafe after this i'm gonna go to one of your cafes i don't want to have to tell the team like hey someone really important's coming like can you yeah. can you can you dial in can you make sure you dial in real quick yeah. uh you know because that's just how we should treat everyone that they're like the most important human in the world totally and yeah hopefully you train that and we all train that in because the other part of that is like what does that say about us as leaders if we do exactly what you said and it's like oh shit guess who's coming guess who's coming and it's like so what you're saying as an owner is you don't actually trust that it's buttoned up for them as is anyway you don't trust the team as a leader that they've already got it together and that that's totally double-edged too i've been on the receiving end of that it's like I'm already like, I already care. I'm already making this super good. Thanks for telling me they're coming. Now I feel stressed out. And now you're watching me and hawking over me, owner, leader, right. person. And I already want this coffee to be perfect. Like, I love it here. I'm on it. Yep. So I, I totally back that. And I think it's really important. And the other part is, it's like, they're paying you already. You know, whoever it is is coming in, they're going to pay for their drinks. So they're, they're paying for whatever it is you have to offer. And hopefully you don't have to do anything special special or new or different because of whoever it is too you know like i very much agree everybody's everybody's already coming in if they came in the door they're coming in to experience what you have to offer and what you have to offer costs how much it says so on the menu and then they pay for that stuff and then they get it and whatever you have makes them feel a way and t because it tastes and you physically exude something and the space thinks feels and smells and is the way it is and then they leave and have an opinion and they'll either come back or tell somebody about it or both or not, you know, and that's all on us. And it's all consistently improvable and so fun to intentionally dive into, I hope. And that's why I'm in the business. It's, yeah. There's endless capacity to make this thing better. I, have, I wish I had thousands and thousands of dollars to do the things that I would love to just intricately tweak all the details in my cafes and i just don't have it right yeah and i'm not you taking on still... an investor just for it yeah because they're not going to get paid back like that no, I mean, well maybe yeah they'll get paid back one day but i'm not trying to take on more debt and lose equity just to make it more pimped out right now for no good reason yeah other than i have an ego so well, they'll get paid back but like i always think it's funny when when people start coffee companies and they're like let's get a bunch of investors <laughs> yeah like, oh yeah dude totally. For when you sell I mean, for that sixty thousand dollars, <laughs> yeah, like your gross revenue is like is nothing, <coughs> and the the margin is not great. It's not a good investment opportunity, you know. Uh, which you got to be long point, Paul, play, yeah, 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 definitely long play. Um, to your point earlier about like you've got to love it. Do you guys still rock uh, BTCs in your cafes? We do not BTC specifically. That's by the cup for people who are listening. They probably already know that in your podcast. But we do have single origin offerings. Uh, we brew, brew them in small, small batch. With so a like, batch brewer. Yep. 
They're okay. both, they're all batch, but we have different, you know, you can geek out on your settings and your Curtis pots. And so we have um, the 60, we'll call it four ounce, I believe right now, is specifically the 64 ounce setting. We've got all our pulses set and our timing and blah, blah, and the, you know, our recipe. Um, and we'll, okay. we'll brew those into the small pots. They stay extremely thermally strong. <laughs> they're, they're hot AF for like two hours easy. And they're airtight. So we go through them pretty quickly, but we'll do two single origin offerings to go with uh, the darker roast night shift, decaf, and the answer. Okay. So you have a dark roast, your flagship blend, the answer, decaf, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. two single origin drips. True story. That's a lot of drips on. Drip, 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 dude. Came through dripping. There's a whole song about it. Came through dripping, <laughs> drip, drip. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so do you do you have a, a shelf life for a pot of drip? Is it you said mm -hmm. two hours? That's for the sh the the other ones we go through. Um, but the shorties you can make, they'll last for up to two hours total. Up to two hours, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and at that point, it's less about the temperature dropping and probably more about Quality. the flavor. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, they're just sitting in the pot. They'll start to, you know, most people probably wouldn't taint, but if you're getting a single origin, you're Theoretically, we expect you're getting it because you want to taste something unique. So we we did our homework there. Yeah. Yeah. Two hours is the max. Um, when you're setting up the... So you guys do Curtis Brewers, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you're setting up the pulses in the mm -hmm. little menu, you know, uh, which is just... Uh, I love how... We're geeking out. Let's go. I know. <laughs> I love setting up pulses. What What's your thought process with that? Like... That you know, there's endless endless options of how you could set a a Curtis Brewer up, and just I for mean, those who... fourteen stages, or is it twelve? How many stages does it go to? You could when you're thinking endless, really. Right. I, I think it's <laughs> it's got to be around there. That's got to be around twelve or fourteen. But if for those who don't know, this is a batch brewer where you have this little menu where you can program basically just on and off settings. So yeah, you can say, hey, I want you to dispense hot water for 30 or for uh for seven seconds and then mm -hmm. i want you to be off for 30 seconds and maybe that's the bloom or sure. whatever so yeah. what what what's your thought process with like dialing in a, a small well actually i don't even i don't i'm not necessarily interested in, I, i'm more so interested in <laughs> your like for the answer okay okay you're dialing in the answer and yeah. you're setting up pulses what do yeah, you do you are uh i mean you treat it like a large pour over and there's things that we know about or at least that i know about pour over from time and tenure which is that like a pour over in a cup that's 10 to 15 ounces we'll call it right somewhere in there the brew window of around up to four minutes makes sense but if you're going bigger you actually want more time you it's not it's not the same uh so we're all, at the end of the day we're going by taste right we're going by all of those things and we're still applying the same concepts which is you know you're gonna have a bloom and, and by the way just to add to what you said it's like it'll say seven second <clears throat> pulse but if you haven't it'll also read out the approximate ounces right so if we're going to a one gallon brew it's 128 ounces everybody i know we're getting into the weeds with geeking but i'm just setting it up as such now there's things that we may or may not know out there which is uh, dark roasted coffees bloom more and sometimes mm. Ethiopian coffees or Kenyan coffees from Africa bloom like crazy. Why? I don't care, but they do, <laughs> you know, like somebody out there might do all the math or all the research, maybe Ray will do it because he has time to do stuff like that. But these are things that I know. And so we pulse to ensure that no grounds get in the coffee, right? We pulse to get to an approximate time that makes sense with the taste and we're actually in the process right now of leveling up to what's next, which is coming very clearly with a TDS meter and knowing what we like and taste and then finding a way to match that with the grind setting and calibration in our cafes. And that will then transcribe to our official newest pulse readings. I set them all to begin with, though, and yeah. the concept was that, basically, which is I didn't go specifically in the stages like, um, like we might in a pour over, right? Call it Somebody says four stages. Somebody says six stages. I don't think that that's a personal thing. So there's a bloom. 
is a bloom that is enough to make sure that it, we wet the whole grounds. It has been a few years since I dialed in, but whatever it was, I would check, right? I'd be like, no, I couldn't check because I had the thing. But I would do it where I approximated what I thought would get the whole thing wet in the first portion. I'd let it sit for 30 to 45 seconds, and then I'd continue pulses on and off to make sure that it was, um, let's see, if I was thinking out loud about how that worked. I believe I would do a bit of a ramp up in terms of volume and then a ramp down in terms of volume distributed to kind of give it like a bell curve bell curve of sorts yeah that i think the bell curve though was a little bit you know favored towards the middle plus it'd get the most towards then again thinking about we're really in the weeds with geeks but if you think about espresso extraction right there's a lot that happens in like the two-thirds to the end with the sweetness and complexity and then at the end you're kind of just like letting it drip out and making sure you hit your your full dose your full right. output yeah uh how long is the brew for the answer like on your curtis on a gallon i believe it's about eight minutes okay gotcha including drip out it may be maybe nine with drip out you know because you can set your drip time and that's that really the drip time for everybody who's listening if you're programming these things the drip time is on you to watch so like Right. All that does is tell whoever brewed the coffee that it's done. So if you put a drip time of one second, it'll say that it's done at call it eight minutes flat, but it might not be done dripping out. And you'll pull the pot out and it'll still be dripping everywhere. So that's oh, yeah. all the drip time is, is like, are you paying attention? You could set it for 12 minutes and it could be done in seven and you yeah. just be waiting and waiting and waiting for it to say it's done. So yeah, just remember that you're a person with eyes and brains and you can think about this stuff and see what's really happening in everywhere, not just Curtis. It's a good thought. Have you played with uh, ground control brewers ever? Just with Major Tom. No, I haven't. <laughs> I have nice one. You really are Next a dad, team. aren't you? I'm um, just, dude, that's a do dads listen to that guy? He, I don't know. Okay, yeah, anyway. I think dads listen to that guy. I mean, I at, don't. Least, at least that was a dad joke. Let's just ground control, that. that was a dad to Major Tom. I thought that was just a quick ADHD joke. I didn't listen to any of uh, the Labyrinth Man himself. Yeah. He was in the movie The Labyrinth. That is a dad joke. <laughs> well, see you next time. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I know we're wrapping up. Um, anything you want to say? I don't know, man. I'm just I, here. I, I feel like maybe we'll, we'll go a little bit longer. But uh, any, anything on your heart? What's, what's, what's going on in your, in your brain? I mean, you heard it. Taking care of yourself is on, is on my heart. So that's, that's yeah. my thing as of recently. Um, take care of yourself. Get some, get some L-theanine. Uh, fun facts about caffeine. They will drain you of salt and a lot of us say that you're sensitive to caffeine most likely you're actually electrolyte deficient Mm. first and then maybe you also are sensitive to caffeine but i think if you're the person who goes on vacation and somehow is like oh i don't feel crazy on vacation like that might have more to do with life stress than it has to do with coffee but electrolytes just a little bit of salt and lemon in your water could literally change your life if you're on bar and you're tasting a lot of coffee taste your coffee please that's on my heart taste it for real Play with it. Don't just accept that it tastes one way because somebody told you. Yeah. Um, man, oh, man, oh, man. Yeah. L-theanine. It's amino acid and green tea. It's good for you. Helps yeah. just chill you out. I'm, I'm all about that. I, I think I heard, you, I heard you talk about that in one of your car chats. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it helped yeah. me a lot, honestly. I used to have panic attacks. Mm. Um, some of that is just like stuff that I wasn't processing in my life. And some of that is super supported by L-theanine. And ashwagandha specifically for me, which ashwagandha is like, it's, it's a, it's a ginseng. It's one of the ones, but it's an adaptive genetic, what gin adaptogenic. Wow. Adaptogenic. That's the word we're looking for. Uh, one that's great for stress reduction and management. So those two have been key. If you happen to be somebody in coffee that has your stuff, which a lot of us do. Yeah. Those are really super, super safe. Super, super safe, easy, easy things to get, and they're not expensive. That could yeah. truly change your life, and truly, salt, water, lemon, game changer. Yeah, you do that every morning. Um, I do a, some sort of electrolyte. Right now, it's Element, so the mm-hmm. LMNT, which is literally sodium, magnesium, potassium, and then I do that. Yeah, and some water with some collagen. Nice. We did it's Element for a while. Uh, and then my wife figured out how to make it yeah um, exactly with the stuff that like she just ordered it on amazon so nice. uh 
we'll just do like a couple scoops of that. But problem is it doesn't taste good because Element was, tastes so good. Yeah, I was wondering um, about that. I was like, what flavor did you make? Well, I, I've tried different uh, different ways to sweeten and flavor it. Um, and my wife, like she takes uh, she takes colostrum. Yeah. Uh, like the Armora stuff. And uh-huh. that tastes really, really good. But it's like, I don't, I feel like I'm unworthy. Like it's too expensive. <laughs> like yeah, I, she can it's take legit, it. Yeah. That's great. But, you know, I'm glad she takes it. But um, <laughs> I'm so glad she takes it too, dude. Oh, goodness. Thank you, Jared. Uh, but I've done like, you know, the Mio squeezes. Mio no. drop. Oh, yeah, yeah. The little drip drips. Gross. Very gross. Yeah, it came through dripping again. Yeah. Gosh. Talking about drips. Um, but the best thing I've found is like the the propel um yeah powder but it's uh-huh. like it's that also has electrolytes in it so it's like yeah. you're you're like quadruple you are electro lit at that point Dude, um and we all love to get so lit so yeah do you is it wait wait does it have sugar though it has stevia yeah okay cool it's, i mean i'm trying to you know you're trying to stay people should avoid sugar if they can but right. yeah that's why I hear you. The element, dude, mango chili is like the best flavor ever. And watermelon, like, gosh, they're very good. But I, yeah, they're, I got on the subscription service and I have, you know, like, it's cheap, expensive in that regard, right? I mean, it's not, not no armor of colostrum, but it'll do, you know? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah I like to, I like to do uh, the electrolytes, the colostrum, if I'm feeling really fancy, just Absolutely. treat myself every once in a you while. Should. And then creatine. All in, yeah, I, I nice, do creatine as well. Nice big thing of water that gets uh-huh. you started off right. That's my guy. Thirty, yeah, thirty-two ounces. The electrolytes, the creatine, the collagen. That's my exact drink. I need, I need someone to make that product. That product would be like fifty dollars a day or something. But like, you Should know, going on the coffee version and like put it also make it like a coffee powder packet too. And we're just like, dude, that'd be like the the best pre workout ever. You know, is get that all our big those... break that we were talking about? <laughs> Maybe there is a big break, Jer. That's us Maybe. right now. Hey, uh, do you do you remember when we served Cat and Cloud back in the day? Yeah, I remember the email. You were we got cut off attempting this before, but that was I remember you writing in and talking about just being this little cart and like, would you be down to serve? Would you be, like, would you even give us coffee? And I remember that email for sure. I'm like, yeah, dude, for sure, we can give you coffee. Mm-hmm. I'm not in charge of it, but I will pass you to my friends who can totally help you out, Alex. Yep, Mr. Marshmallow himself. Marshmallow. Um, I want his donuts so bad. Anyway, yeah, that, I totally remember that. Yeah. Now it's cool to have a face to the situation, you know, all these, all these years later. Mm-hmm. But I do specifically remember that email. That's one thing about my company, our company, but that's where I feel like my company is that I see a lot. Like, I pay attention to a lot of stuff. Like, the people who are on, like, all of our base camp, I'm, like, seeing a lot of the team members when they're calling in sick and their lives and stuff. And I'm like, I truly am. Like, I do care. I think a lot of them are like, oh, I'm like, did you get your shift covered? Was you all good? Is the thing? And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. Right. No, I'm there. Like, same with all the emails. Like, I can't see them all, all now, but I see a lot of them. And yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Less um, of those specific ones, but. Yeah. We, I just remember, you know, serving the answer. I remember the truth. Mm. Uh, Alan Iverson and Paul Pierce represent as a second to triple background reason why those are called that. Oh, really? Yeah, I love Dallin Iverson and Chris love Paul Pierce. But also, uh, the answer is a great name for somebody trying to figure out if they don't know what to pick, what coffee do I pick? And that seems to be like a question to me. So the answer is for everything. And it's that blend that's for drinking an espresso. It takes milk. It doesn't. Then the truth is like, you want the truth? This is, this is our craziness right now. Like, you want something yeah. a little more wild? It's only going to work for those who love the coffee. This is the truth. This is what we love. Yeah. This is what we're geeking out on right now. I love that. I love that so much. Uh, do you do you feel like the answer has been pretty consistent over the years as far as, you know, with all your green sourcing and roasting and changes? It's had its moments. I think, I don't think it's possible for it to be perfectly consistent. So that'd be in, like, I'd be lying if that was the case. Yeah. Uh, I think keeping it close and keeping those regions clear is the goal. And it's something that we've actually talked about. It's like you have, we have intention for the three coffees that are in there. And they what they represent and make that coffee taste like. And that ultimately needs to be the goal, no matter what they are. So 
we have done a great job of consistently keeping it Ethiopian, Colombian, and Brazilian coffees. Um, there have been ebbs and flows, though, into the, the fruitiness of the natural Ethiopian coffee, for sure. Brazil's yeah. fairly easy to kind of audible on, but Ethiopian coffee, you would imagine, will be really simple, but there'll be whatever, like a whole palette where it's just like, this just isn't popping like it normally is. And I think that's what happens when you have, you know, co-op washing stations where everybody from around the region is the same name. And there's no way to even, they're like, yeah, well, this is still Kircha. I'm like, totally. Uh, so it doesn't taste like Kircha right now, though. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, it yeah. is. I think for sure. Yeah. Man. So, I mean, yeah. we've had we've had those moments and I don't think anybody's getting around that for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, picture, I know we were going to talk about something else completely, but picture those big, big companies. We originally, by the way, everybody were talking about how cool it would be to have like single lot and single farmer representation across the board. What ends up happening both in a good way and a challenging way is like you get to a place where you're needing more coffee than they can provide for you. So then you start having to mix and match um regional like that's what sometimes people call day lots and a lot of big companies do that they're like okay in honduras i need coffees in this point range that have generally these flavors and then the people benjamin or whoever will put together a table that they think fits the bill and then whoever picks from that table the coffees that all fit into that thing and that's what that becomes and then you're in all of a sudden you're working with x amount of farmers so that's how that would work yeah okay day lot what what's a day lot You know, that's a term that I, if I'm honest, I don't know where it specifically came from and I could be totally wrong, but what it, in terms of my assumption, but that would be exactly like I said, like 12 farmers, you don't know who they are from specifically this part of the mountain region. Like we'll use Antigua because I know that on, on the volcano diff. Agua, it's like right there, and all around that mountain is Hunapu, and it's all these different farmers that are going to the co-op, right? Um, they all come in. What might happen is, in the context of somebody needing to say we needed Kircha, we'll say is the word, and even though this is completely all over the place, but Kircha needs to taste like this. We have decided we need to buy more than Kircha has to offer, so they put all these things on, and on the day you pick these ones to go into that container and in that container they're gonna put all those in the same bag to fit under this thing and that was your day lots from the day you picked lot 12 and 7 and 9 and those are my day lots those are all getting combined into a product and getting sent to america and it's going to be hunapu in this regard to replace right. kircha because it tastes the same in this story that i just told yeah I, yeah have you guys bought containers of coffee a full container from anywhere no not well yeah uh, oh, geez. But that's like, that's the main component blends for like, um, like Hercha is one of them. You know, they have the ability to send us that or um, coffee from Colombia and like either Via de Calca or one of the Supremos that hit the quality standards for the answer, night shift, things like that. Brazil. Yeah. Um, I mean, gosh, though, if I'm answering, honestly, I'm not sure we buy it all at the same time in that regard, too. You know, like, I don't know right. if I bought a whole, we bought a whole container of 250, 300 bags of coffee at the same time. I'm sure we've secured it. That would have to make sense. Um, but I, I don't specifically work on the metrics for that. Yeah. I know we use enough to correct, you know, like yeah. that's obvious. I know that for sure. <clears throat> Charles is specific to how we buy it. Maybe we release it and work with places like Royal or Olam or Cafe Imports to, you know, this is how much we're going to need. And they're like, cool, we'll make sure we bring in that amount. But do we purchase it ourselves? No. Not yet. I don't think. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. You. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Because I. I, Yeah. I'd like to buy. Get to buying a full container from places like Honduras and the places that we're like really deeply personally invested, uh, and keep growing things like the Best Friends Club because that's super super helpful to the people we work with everywhere. Um, But man, it's a whole other conversation. The Best Friends Club in life. We could just do a whole other podcast one day. Yeah, I, I think we'll have to because I the here uh, seeing some of your posts about Best Friends Club, I saw those kind of around the same time that I was having these thoughts after SCA about what if we could only have single farmer coffees on our yeah. menu, 
you know, is that is that a realistic thing? Uh, and is that even a good thing? It, is that like an, an ethically superior thing to do than buy from a bunch of co-ops or from a spot sheet, you know? Um, well, you, you and I think that some cool stuff. Yeah. And I think, I think seeing you post about best friends club, we, we should totally talk about that another time. Um, yeah, we could. Cause I, right. I mean, yeah, I think it could totally be all that you want it to be pending some things and we could just geek out on it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wh- when are you hooping next? I get to practice some hoops tonight at the G League Warriors Stadium. Actually, it's gonna be fun. NBA yeah. line and all. I mean, I should. I'll, I'll, I'll have your phone number. I'll. I'll try to get a. I'm very sore. I did the CrossFit workout Murph yesterday, like Oof. before I went to work. Yeah. Which is for people who don't care still, even though that I did it. It's, you run a mile, and then you do a hundred pull ups, and two hundred push ups, and three hundred squats, and then you run another mile. And so I'm sore. A hundred pull ups. Mm-hmm. Do you do like sets of ten or? No, oh, dog. I do twenty sets of five, ten, fifteen for those movements. Five pull ups, ten push ups, okay. fifteen air squats, just to keep you moving. Some people do the full hundred, and it's just like, how sore do you want to be? Like you're hitting failure, especially in the push ups. I for me, like, anyway, yeah, that's a whole thing. Yeah, the pull ups would be what absolutely would crush me. Yeah, they're horrible. Yeah. It's all horrible. I mean, and by the time I'm done, I'm doing like, I am doing like a three and a two with the pull-ups. And then I'm doing a, uh, sometimes, I mean, I got to the point where I was like two, 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 two for my set of 10. Just like, <sighs> quick downward dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, it's tough. Yeah, But sometimes you just do that to try to, it's social and ridiculous. And you see how, like, my mile times were great. It shows that I haven't been doing CrossFit as much. I've been playing basketball more. And both my mile times were like, under seven minutes without pushing the second one was like six minutes and 25 seconds at the end of that whole thing felt good yeah it felt like yeah it felt good that's awesome the rest of the day i was toast but it felt good yeah okay and then you're you're playing tonight Uh, but i'm gonna shoot yeah and it's just some practice and shoot around with uh, a dude who's gonna like city league starts next week so mm -hmm. one of the guys i haven't really hooped with he's picking back up for the summer so he's like practice and he works for the, the the warriors here in town yeah that's awesome. Well, when are you um, next? Right now? Uh, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Um, I found I found a new group of guys uh, at a different park that uh, I'm gonna start doing Thursday nights. There you go. Because um, my wife has a, a a Zumba class that she likes to do on Thursday nights. So like she she does Zumba class. There's childcare there. So while she's doing that, I'm I'm playing perfect. Pickup um so i think we'll we'll get that locked into our weekly thing but can you gosh, dunk? no i can't same it's it's, it's, cool. it's my uh i'm embarrassed by it i feel i feel like a uh i feel like a i'm doing a disservice to humanity by being six seven and not being able to dunk okay i was gonna say are you six five plus okay well yeah and my my goal is to be able to dunk in a game by the end of summer uh, oh, you did tell me that, didn't you? Okay. Yeah. I'm telling everyone. I think you told me that at SCA. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got to do that. Yeah. It 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 would feel so good. I I have oh. dunked in the past. Um, yeah. but I'm I'm so much heavier now. Like cuz I I It changes. Yeah. I like I in high school I weighed like 180 pounds and I was this height. And yeah, so I weigh a buck less... 80 right now. What's that? I weigh a buck 80 right now. Yeah, but okay. it's a lean 180, everybody. Okay, don't make me rip the shirt off. I will. No, you look great. You look great. Um, I, but now, now I'm like 225, and my legs just hurt, man. Like they hurt from carrying around that weight and like jumping. But um, I mean, dude, I feel you. I threw on a weight vest the other day, at like it had 30 pounds. I'm like, geez, dude, like it is significantly different. Yeah. If you drop 10 pounds, like you're gonna your vert will go up probably six inches, easy. Right. Which doesn't mean you even need to. And like the way I look literally is not by like, I actually am not trying to look any sort of way. I just do the things I do. Like I play basketball. I do the CrossFit. I do the, yeah. um, however I turn awesome. out, I turn out. I'm not, I truly am not going in there and like, you know, looks isolating maxing. muscles. No, yeah. I'm not. I just am not. I don't yeah, like it. It depends on your goals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but He's yeah. Over I mean, toes, right? Legs. What's that? 
Do you do the knees over toes guy stuff? I've heard of it. Riley Riley keeps telling me about it because I always I always complain about my shins hurting. And uh it'll help. Yeah. I need to I need to I, I've always heard like, you know, old older people older than me be like, you know, you're you're gonna have to start warming up soon. You know, like you're you're gonna start hurting after after <laughs> playing. And I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. But literally like <laughs> I think so I'm twenty seven now. And oh, uh lucky but i i i believe them now because i'm starting to hurt um so i i need a protocol i need i need to have something i do before i play or you know whatever to like get get things greased up a little bit yeah you don't even need to do very much oh i'm so jealous of you you're 27 bro if you don't dunk by 30 i don't know i'm gonna have to fly over there and kick you in the nuts i think i know that's what i'm saying i i i, feel, I can almost I feel it. yeah like i can hold the i can grab rim at my age which is above 40 and yeah you can do it for sure you're an athlete. I, I, I can see it's it it's probably mental it's probably mental um, that's a fact that's a real truth dude yeah i can jump higher when i'm not thinking about it than when i'm trying to i know it's isn't that wild um jared <laughs> thanks I believe for, you. thanks for uh for hanging <laughs> um we'll have to do this again uh it was good to just chat with you Really hey, good. absolutely. Let's get after it. And I had a great time. Thanks for all of it. I feel like we should totally do another podcast and talk about other stuff. Plus, then we can hang out. Yeah. That's and it's scheduled, so we have to. Right. That's yeah. part of being an adult, isn't it? Scheduling. Yeah, um, I'll hit you with the business plan for coffee, creatine, electrolytes. We'll come up. We'll workshop the name, but I'm pretty sure it's called uh, You Will Poop Immediately After This. <laughs> I've got an instant coffee friend I, I have an instant coffee friend that just moved here and okay. so he, he can be our instant coffee side um, go. but cat and cloud valor coffee podcast signing off peace stay gold hey everyone that's the podcast for the week thanks so much for listening if you heard something that inspired you let us know or tell a friend these are the types of connections that are the most important to us and that we seek to create every day if there's something you heard and you want to know more about, send us an email to podcast at catandcloud.com or head to our website, catandcloud.com slash podcast and let us know. While you're on our site, check out everything we have to offer. Dive deep into one of our single origin coffees or pick up a little treat for yourself. We have something for everyone, so check it out. Also, find us in the usual places, YouTube, Instagram. We're always there sharing amazing things. All right, that's it. Thanks everyone for being awesome. We'll be back next week.